Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Mardu Mutate deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features some nice hate cards that match up well in today's standard meta game. Thinking of Hushbringer, a 2 mana 1 2 fairy with flying and lifelink saying, Creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause abilities to trigger, and there's no shortage of ETB creatures in standard that we wouldn't mind shutting down. Thinking of Giruda, Agent of Treachery no longer works, Color and Familiar doesn't drain us, companions like uh, Keruga and Yorion also no longer have their ETB effect work, and the various Cavaliers out of the Jeskai Fires deck. So lots of creatures that the Hushbringer shuts down, and it also makes for a decent mutate target as a non-human with flying and lifelink. And of course we don't have any enter battlefield creatures ourselves, so it's going to be a one-sided effect. Then we also have three copies of Kunoros, Hound of Athreos as a 3 mana, 3-3 three, three legendary Hound with Vigilance, Manus and Lifelink, so great keywords to go with Mutate. And creature cards in graveyards can't enter the battlefield, and players can't cast spells from graveyards. So another card that can help us shut down the Geruda decks, shuts down any recursion from potential Lurus decks. So we get a lot of useful abilities on a decent body that we don't mind mutating onto. And then the mutate creatures in the deck are Porcupine and Snap decks. Porky Parrot a 4 mana 3 4 that mutates for 2 in a red onto a non human and then taps to deal X damage to any target where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. And we've got a total of 12 potential Death Touch creatures in the deck that combine very nicely with Porky Parrot because if we mutate this onto a Death Touch creature, then the 1 damage will destroy any creature that's dealt 1 damage as opposed to needing to deal damage equal to its toughness. So Porky Parrot plus Death Touch is a great way to deal with opposing creature decks. We've got the four copies of Falmar Knight, which can also draw a card first, as a 1-1 Death Touch Zombie Knight that we can mutate onto. We've got the Vampire of Dire Moon, which has both Death Touch and Life Link, so we can deal one damage with the Porcupine, killing a creature and gaining one life. And then we also have the four copies of Knight of the Ebon Legion. Does require three mana before it gains Death Touch, but it's also just a very good card individually that can help us close out the game. So this also combines nicely with the Porcupine. And then we've got three copies of Snapdax Apex of the Hunt, which is a 4 mana 3 5 double strike and mutates for 2, a hybrid, black red, and double white. And whenever this creature mutates, it deals 4 damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls, and we gain 4 life. So great in combination with Kunoros, as we now have a Vigilance, Menace, Lifelink, and Double Strike 3 5. That's very difficult to block. And of course, uh, getting to kill a creature when this essentially comes into play is very useful too. And it does get around Hushbringer, because it doesn't actually count as an ETB effect. So it's still very good there. And every now and then we might mutate multiple times on a Porky Parrot if we want to deal more than one damage. So that's also an interaction that can come up. And Double Strike, also a very useful ability to put on a Death Touch creature, as it now becomes almost impossible for the opponent to block our creature and kill it. Then at 1 mana, taking a look at the rest of the deck, we've covered all the Death Touchers here, Falmar Knight. We usually want to adventure first to draw a card. We've got the Knight of the Ebon Legion, which can close out the game by himself. And the Vampire of Dire Moon, which is mostly here for the Porky Parrot and Snapdax synergies. Also, if we mutate Snapdax on a Death Touch creature, the 4 damage will also be for Death Touch damage. So even if the targeted creature has more than 4 toughness, it's still gonna die. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of a Janny's Pride Mate, which also has a ton of synergy in this deck, as a 2 mana 2-2 two -two that picks up a plus 1 plus 1 counter whenever we gain life, and no shortage of life gain synergies between the Vampire, the Hushbringer, Kunoros, and Snap decks also gains for life, and then if we ever get to combine Porky Parrot with a Vampire, we can essentially gain 1 life per turn to go with the Pride Mate, so this can also help us close out the game. We've got our 4 Hushbringers, and then a 4 Heartless Act as another cheap removal spell to complement our Porky Parrot and the Snap decks. And this is great at killing creatures like Winota before they can attack alongside a bunch of non-humans to maybe trigger and take out various other creatures like the Companions. And then we also have two copies of Cathartic Reunion, because we can sometimes flood out a bit, we don't have a ton of mana sinks in this deck. And sometimes we are in a matchup where some of the hate creatures like Hushbringer or Kunoros are not particularly useful. And we can use this to go digging for the other hate cards that are hopefully more useful. And of course in the late game if we draw a bunch of lands we can discard those to the reunion as well and draw three cards. And then we're also playing Gigantha as our companion which is kind of a free roll as a 5 mana 5-5. Five five. It's also a non-human so we can mutate onto it. 
and a 5-5 can also help us uh, close out the game as a decent curve topper to keep up the pressure. And then the mana base, we've got four planes because we do need double white to mutate snap decks, three swamps and one mountain to go with four Savai Triome, which we can also cycle if we're flooding out a bit, and then all 12 Shocklands, Godless Shrine, Blood Crypt and Sacred Foundry. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand seems like a pretty easy mulligan. Opponent's not playing any companion or Hushbringer is guaranteed to be good. This we can keep. Opponent on a Demirror, maybe Flash deck. As we see Cutthroats, this could be a challenging matchup, but they are stuck on two. Don't really mind if Kunorus gets countered since we have a backup. Get in there with Konoros. And gets bounced. Right. Just replay it alongside the knights. Knight and Kunorus could attack, although if they have another bounce spell or removal spell, they'll force me to spend three mana pumping knight, which is not great, so maybe I'll just send in Kunorus. And then hopefully we can mutate snap decks onto a uh, vampire of dire moon, take out another creature. We are in voracious uh, great shark territory here. the plan still to attack with Kunoros, can maybe send in Vampire of Dire Moon too, and then let them make the first move basically. Opponent takes four, so the two knights are gonna grow. I guess I can play Gigantha. Which I don't care too much if it gets countered. Resolves. The knights grow. Still only two creatures that can really block here. I 
and a bouncing shore shark. That's not the shark I was expecting. But uh, this opens up the window for Snapdax. And an octopus, fair enough. So I could kill the cutthroat or I could kill this uh, abomination of a mutation which is maybe a little safer before it gets out of hand. And then our double strike death toucher can attack which will also trigger the Knights of Evan Legion. Jumps with the Night Bonder. Fair enough. Take seven. I've got some life to spare. So they probably have a removal spell for Snapdax. This turn, I'm likely Palinkunoros plus Pride Mates, but let's attack first. Heartless Acts makes sense. Didn't think I pump. The knights get bigger and our points down to two cards and a brazen borrower. Tyrant Scorn takes out Konoros, but we have a backup. Now I don't have a Death Toucher in play to combine with uh, Snapdax's Mutate to take out the Cutthroat. Bone's still attacking. And they concede. Alright, sweet. Managed to beat Blue Black Flash. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Giruda deck. So we want a Mulligan towards Kunuros, Hushbringer, or maybe the Porky Parrot plus Death Touch combo, and this hand doesn't have any of those, so it's an easy Mulligan. Still nothing, so got a Mulligan again, sadly. Alright, we've got Kunuros, we've got Death Touch plus Parrots, so I'll keep... So I need a lands, and then probably get rid of Heartless Acts. So that's the advantage of playing against companions, is knowing which hands to mulligan. And the Geruda decks don't really play a ton of answers to my creatures. Even Druda turned to Hushbringer, which I guess is fine too here. Hushbringer into Kunuros, all the hate. And then if they just start hard casting their 6-6s six and other big creatures, we can maybe deal with those thanks to Falmar Knight plus Porky Parrots. And since they could already cast a Giruda next turn, I'll play it safe and play Kunoros. Even though I kind of want to have the Falmar Knight in play already, so I can start shooting stuff down with the Porky Parrot right away. But just in case they go like end of turn, bounce my Hushbringer, untap and play Giruda. I don't want to run into that. So Geruda 
stopped by the Hushbringer. And if it wasn't for Hushbringer, we would have Kunoros. Alright, so I guess we can draw cards and then play Falmar Knights. Eh, I'll play the Vampire instead. That way we get to gain a bit of life too. And don't have to fear a Kogla killing one of my creatures because of the Hushbringer. So we drew all the hate cards, did mulligan towards them, so it wasn't uh, pure luck. Forerunner's still a 7-7 Vigilance Trample, which is decent. Guess I'll take it so we can Porcupine next turn. Shoot that down. Can block Jeruda with the Falmar Knights. Spark double copies Jeruda, just a 6 6 with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, which dies to my parrots. So yeah, we built this deck with Jirudai in mind, so it's nice to be able to beat it here. More Hushbringers, but probably fine to play Gigantha now. Take seven. Double blocking also totally reasonable. Alright, Fiend Artisan gets around my uh, Hushbringer, so probably killing that. Although most of the creatures they would search up probably have some sort of ETB effect. And I can just kill them with a Porky Parrot for one. Alright, sweet. Double Mulligan into our hate cards. Getting the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, the sand seems reasonable. Don't know if the Hushbringers are going to be great in this matchup since we don't see any companion. But got a pretty nice start with a bit of a life gain synergy here. Flourishing Fox, so up against the cycling deck where Hushbringer is not particularly great, but uh, gaining life is useful against Zenith Flare killing me, so I guess I'll play Pride Maiden attack. If they trade, that's fine by me. Finding Porky Parrots to go with uh, Vampires, definitely pretty important since they do play some pretty important creatures that uh, are worth killing, like the Rescuer. Ask and you shall receive. Still pretty far from casting a Zenith Flare. Could also attack with the Parrot this turn instead of shooting down a Fox. But I guess it could cycle and then play the two mana fight spell. Let's just kill it now.
Hushbringer is not too important to get in play. So not prioritizing it. Could still die to double zenith flare. Alright. Flare on the pride mates instead of the porky parrots and instead of our face. So I guess that's a good thing. Play Gigantha to apply the most pressure. Opponent on the back foot. And one Zenith Flare down. The creatures we can handle. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. So got to beat the Cycling Deck 2 here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Opponent's not playing any companion. Don't have black mana, so this is a mulligan. This we can try. Facing a Temple of Triumph. Ooh, Porky Parrot, so if we're up against a creature deck, Porky Parrot plus Falmer Knight's gonna be great. Uh, given that I have Kunoros that's 3 mana, and the Mutate that's 3 mana, and Knight Pumping is 3 mana, I might not have time to draw cards with Falmer Knights. So might as well run it out there. Sky Knight Vanguard, alright. Could be a Winota deck. Let's shoot this down. I'll keep the Knight on defense in case of a Legion War boss so we can eat the token. Inspiring Veterans, so maybe just a Boros Knight's deck. Well, they better have some removal for the Sporky Parrots. So I can kill the Veteran, attack with the Knights, and then play Kunoros. Icon of Ancestry naming knights. Yeah, these knight decks typically don't play a ton of removal. They try and go over the top with Ember Cleave, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Another icon. They don't have any good attacks. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, awesome. Porky Parrot doing some work this game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we're facing another Giruda deck. I've got her Hushbringer, so we'll keep. And then of course Knight plus Porky Parrot can help us take care of whatever big creatures they still ramp out. Kunoros showing up, definitely very good in this matchup too, as it stops 
Giruda from uh, doing anything, and our opponent concedes to the turn 2 Hushbringer. Easy peasy, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not sure what we're up against. This hand could be okay. It's nothing uh, special, don't have the Porky Parrots, but we'll try it. Turn on Grazer. So a ramp deck. I think I'll play the Knights. They might have the uh, Mutate Octopus here, in which case I don't want to block. So playing the Falmar Knights would have worked out a little bit better. Guess we'll do it next turn. So finding Porky Parrot is probably pretty good in this matchup. There it is. I did just lose my Death Toucher, but uh, Knight could also potentially gain Death Touch. Now in order to make that work I need 3 mana, so I have to mutate this turn and then next turn I can pump Knight and go for it. Alternatively I can attack, opponent probably takes it, and then play Kunuros. Now let's set up this Porky Parrot. More ramp. Sure. Might be setting up for a big Hydroid Crisis or maybe an Andre's Forerunners. So, can play the Falmar Knight and still uh, pump Parrot and kill Greathorn. I'll probably just main phase it to be safe. And our opponent concedes, can beat the Porky Parrots with Death Touch. Alright, sweet, so the Porky Parrots did a ton of work in these games today. Didn't face any Planeswalker heavy control decks or spell based combo decks, which are the weakness of this strategy, since this deck kind of preys on creature based strategies with a Death Touch and Porky Parrot synergies. Whereas, uh, of course, a Planeswalker heavy deck or a spell based combo deck doesn't play many creatures, so then a lot of our cards are useless. So it's not a deck that's going to be great in every matchup, but against a lot of the popular metagame decks right now, it's a lot of fun to try out. So that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.